G'day mates, it's Donny here. Um, today, going to be looking at the Defender that's behind me. So, been asked to put a, just some dual battery stuff in it, and um, normally I would have actually talked you through how to take everything out of it, but I just wanted to see what we're in for. So I'll show you kind of where we're up to and talk through some of the tools you would have needed up to where we are in the moment. Get it. All right, so this is the um, D300, which has actually got the 48 volt, like, half hybrid whatever you want to call it system so to get access to this you can see these two um where are we outside there? on the very back here there's actually these little points which is where the um sorry this side because i've pulled the other one out that's where your false uh, like tail floor sits in on the top of this there's a foam insert that normally sits above all of this as well um i've taken all of the foam inserts out so we can try and get access to everything now someone online gave me a good tip which is that you've actually got a 12 volt uh, accessible on this panel here on the right hand side so on the left is the battery for the hybrid system and then on the right to all your panels this uh, positive wire actually goes all the way back up to the front connects to the battery somewhere so you've actually got constant 12 volt here is my understanding um, we will find out if that is true so that's what we're going to actually tap into for the 12 volt for the red arc system and then over here we've got a earth point so i'm going to actually pull out this side as well just to see if there's any points over here that we can use instead just so that we don't have to do as long of a wire run now to take everything out the the first part pulling this this whole false panel out is literally you pull it up and then you pull it backwards it just pulls off these um, tabs here. It's probably the simplest part of actually getting this all apart. Then the next part is the foam insert. It's kind of a bit odd, but you pick it up and kind of angle it towards the left-hand side of the car, and um, it'll eventually come out. I think if you took these off, it might make it a little bit easier. We'll find out later when I put everything back in because I might leave this stuff off when we do it. But anyway, at the moment, what I'm doing now is um, we've taken these these out which is the same you know on this side they're actually just an allen key um on the front and the back there was a so actually i'll show on this side so one of those standard plastic screws then on the very back there's another allen key screw you can take out so you need to take all of those out and then it'll actually lift up to to take it out now the reason i'm doing that is i want to actually get behind this panel because i want to get access to the wire for the 12 volt on the cigarette lighter because with the red arc and being a modern car, um, you need to connect one wire to an accessory wire. So that's what I'm hoping to do here. So to get access to that, is so far what we've done, taking out the Allen keys, taking this part off. Now, this little light that's normally here, you can just pop out with a flat blade screwdriver. Just be careful because you don't have a lot of room in terms of wiring for this little connector. Um, you do have to take out the back piece along here as well so it was just two i think it's t30 torx and i just had to duck out and actually get some more tools because you do need to take off the latch which is actually a t40 i believe so after i take off this we should be able to pull this panel up um you do actually need to if you're going to fully remove it this panel is one whole piece goes in front of this this seat so all the way down there uh I'm not really looking to fully remove it. I'm hoping that I can actually shift it forward enough to get the, the plug off the back of here and then drop it down so I can do some wiring on it and then push it all back. Um, I've seen some people remove these panels online. They do look like a bit of a pain. You've also got as well, kind of like in the Discovery 5, so there's like a little luggage hook here. These ones, what you do is you put them on a 45 degree angle. So kind of like, a bit hard to show you. So like that with where my finger is, so pointing slightly upwards and then pull them straight like on the 45 degree angle out. That will then give you access to the back there and that was a T30 to actually take that out. So yeah, I mean, you've got access to wiring pretty easily. It's just um, the uh, 12 volt accessory wire that seems to be a bit of a problem. I'm sure there's one somewhere else, but I don't really want to cut into things that I don't know what they do. Whereas this one's pretty simple for me to go, you know, that is definitely a 12 volt accessory wire. So let's tap into that and um, yeah, I'll keep you updated along the way. All right, so being able to pop all this out carefully, obviously, because I don't want to damage it and um, kind of difficult to get to, but you can kind of see in the back, 
below the grey plug, can't quite see it. There's a, the, you can just see it there at the back, the white, that's actually the cigarette lighter socket. Now, I've actually got it plugged into the multimeter here. So we've got a yellow and purple wire and a black wire, so I'm assuming the black's the earth. I've had a look around, I can't find a yellow and purple wire in any of these other harnesses. Um, so I'm assuming that it must run sort of, I don't know, in the door channel or something up to the front. So what we need to look for now is at the moment, um, as you can see, no real actual um, voltage on there. But what we want to check is when we actually go and turn the car on, if we get 12 volts. So we'll just go and do that now. Oh, good news everyone. So that does actually hurt, well, surprisingly, 14 volts. So these are really good for your trigger wires on your Red Art controllers. So basically it just tells the controller, hey, the car's on, do stuff, rather than um, just running straight off the battery, which you'll run the risk of you know, depleting your starter battery. So the next thing I'm gonna try and do, which is gonna be exciting, is that we gotta actually cut and splice into that purple and yellow wire. Um, in the past, I've just sort of like knocked it off and just not worried about this 12 volt socket, but this time I think I might try and just wire it in properly. Um, so we can still have that 12 volt socket just in case you ever need it for anything. And then um, what we'll try, probably try and do is follow along these harnesses because the foam insert, we're actually gonna pull the wires up in on most likely this side. And um, yeah, I'll uh, get cracking on that because it's gonna be fun because we don't have a lot of room to actually be able to pull that out any further than where it is. So we'll see how we go, hey? Right, since we're gonna be cutting some wires and basically wiring a lot of stuff soon, under the front driver's seat in these, you've got this little hatch. You just pull it straight up, and there's your starter battery. So what we're going to do is we're just going to knock off the uh, negative on the back here, just so it's not connected to anything, so that we're not running voltage everywhere where I'm, you know, cutting and splicing wires. So it's just the safest thing to do is obviously isolate your battery from everything, and um, yeah, we'll get started. Righto, we've got the uh, lead wire soldered in now. Just hooked up the battery and um, just go and make sure we've actually got 12 volt on the blue wire, which is what we're going to need when we turn it on. Alright, that's good to see. We've got 14.26 volts. It's got the negative hooked up over there, positive around the blue wire. You will notice as well because it's got the air compressors in them for uh, adjustable height, they will spit some air every now and then, so don't be too worried about that. It's normal. So anyway, now I've got to try and put this panel back on and put that connector back on. The only downside of this is because it's so hard to get to, um, you know, try and make sure you do a good connection on the back there. That's why I've decided to solder it because, I mean, if it comes undone, then it's going to be a pretty annoying procedure to try and fix it back up. So hopefully this one's going to hold pretty good. All right, that's in. We've just um, cable tied it along this existing ridge. Should have just enough wire to get it up to where we want to, but at least we can join on that side now if we need to. Now, putting this back in, a couple of things. Make sure that you actually come in and plug back in everything and either and run up the wires where they're meant to be. So, number one is the actual, that's the up and down, you know, height of the car assist. The other one we want is a bit harder to do. especially when you're trying to film yourself. But anyway, the other one we wanted was this one. So this little uh, gray wire for the um, for the light that's at the back here. So now that they're both connected, we should be able to push it back in and um, start to connect everything back up. Make sure it's all clipped in properly everywhere and um, yeah, start to look at doing the rest of it. Okay, like I said, a bit weird because we're kind of going backwards. I'd already pulled everything out. All right, pushed it all back in. This is one thing to be aware of as well, this um, seal. So it actually sits inside the seal, so make sure you actually do that, make sure it goes back in. You've got two of these annoying plastic screws, one at the back there, one at the front. There's another one that goes through the side, as you can see on this other side. So now that we've got those in, what we're gonna do is tighten them up, obviously. So it holds everything into place. Remember these just sort of splay out, they don't actually feel tight. They're just gonna go in like that to position everything all right so we're all good there now I need to put the latch back on need to put this cover back on and um, need to put the rail back on as well so I'll go and grab that 
for the bottom cover. Just position it and um, push them back on. It just clips in. Now the top hinges though, so when you take this off, you don't have to do anything with the bolts behind that, just so everyone's aware. It's only this top one because it holds the actual cover over the panel. So that's a... Hard to see in the light. T40 Torx. So I'm just going to stop filming and get them started by hand. You don't want these to be super, super tight, just um, so you don't want to strip the bolts out or anything like that. Just make sure that they're both quite firm. There probably is a torque setting for it, but too hard to find it in the manual, so we're just going to go with it uh, being tight. And um, get these out of the way. Make sure that I can actually close this door. Feels good. Feels like it latched in the right place. That's a good start. All right, I'll go and get the other bits and we'll start doing those as well. Okay, next up, you're gonna want these. that have actually got the uh, two clips along the back that they sit in. They should just sit just like that both sides so as you can, as you can see it uh, just push it in and it just kind of sits flat like that as I mentioned before one of these annoying plastic things goes in here and the screw we'll fix that up and then we've actually got the two um, two points here with the allen key to do as well and the uh, the other bolt at the back there so get that sorted shortly and then we've got to put this back panel on as well there we go got them in just reminded me so these actually have a plastic spring clip on the back these are the ones out of the discovery but they're the same thing so when you put them in just position with that so basically go down clip in and then do up your allen key ones in the discovery are a Torx, but the ones in the Defender for some reason are an Allen key, just to confuse everything. Now, another thing I noticed, these bolts at the back here are actually T30 Torx. I think I was just lucky with the Allen key size that I had when I pulled them out, so they are actually a Torx key. Now, let's see if we can show you this. So, in behind here, as I said, we've got the bracket. So, if this is in, so I'm going to do is so 45 degree angle. Oh, Jesus. Hold on, wrong way around that and it just slots in so as you can see pulls in pulls out so when you want to pull it out 45 and up that'll get it out and won't break anything so as you can see in the back there all good to put in the uh, T30 screw that we had that we took out so I'm just about to do that and then this side's pretty much finished Okay, last bit before we start doing some other stuff. As you can see, some of the um, metal clips actually stayed in the body of the car. It's all right, I can just push them back through. There's two clips on either side. You're just gonna position them into here and then push down, it should slot into place. And then again, I think there's two T30 screws to uh, secure it in. So we'll do that now and um, that's it for putting the back panels back together. All right, all back together, trim wise. We've got the earth cable over there positive cable in under this thing so on these terminals it's the one on the, the left so there's three terminals you want this one the one on the far left so I've got split tubing now the reason for the split tubing a lot of people are a bit weird about it but to be honest it's really good because it just means that if you if you pinch that wire like it's actually quite hard to damage it last thing you want is open wire like this obviously that's quite a thick one so it's going to be hard but you don't want wires that are going to get crimped or pushed on something and this is going to have a flat you know, flat thing above the top of it. You don't want to have something pushing on it that's actually going to short against the body. Um, our positive is going to run up to a manual, a manual breaker anyway, just for safety. But this just gives you that extra peace of mind. It's also a little bit easier to then cable tight and tidy it all up. So that's where we're at, at the moment. I'll go and get the um, the floor to chuck back in. Righto, both the wires are run. Just thought I'd show everyone this. Basically, just put a um, a grommet whatever you want to call them, a um, cable gland, sorry, yeah, cable gland, that's what they're called. 
that then runs down into the split tubing and then this is just the the actual foam insert that actually comes with the car so i wanted to keep this because obviously your jack and everything goes in there um i've just put a bit of ply in that i've covered with carpet could have cut it out here to make it a bit neater but this is going to be enough for the battery and everything to sit on top with enough clearance i believe so we'll find out when the battery actually gets here it's currently in western australia so i've got to wait for it to show up so now i'm going to struggle to um put this back in the way it's meant to be and then see what else we can do all right all back in here now so what i'm going to do is lift that up so this is where we're going to have the red arc charger we've basically got all the wiring that we actually need to start with that now um, got the nava fuse box there as well just so we can distribute it now going to be pretty simple with this to begin with because it's only a short trip for who's taking the car we're actually just going to pop the wires up over the back here you can do more permanent installations we cut through panels but i prefer to try and do this just so that if you ever want to sell the car or do anything everything in here is easily removed so there we go it is sitting the plus the foam insert sitting up a little bit at the back but um i think that's just from the split tubing sitting under it so it's not really a problem and um yeah there you go so next part is to basically the battery because it's going to be lithium we can mount it anywhere we want it's going to sit sideways in there red arc's going to be on this side with the breaker and everything and um yeah that's actually turned out pretty neat and then you don't lose any of the normal functionality of the car other than that little storage space so cheers thanks for watching um once we get the the other stuff that we need i'll maybe do another video that explains the the rest of it so how to set up the red arc and everything in there cheers